In this lecture, you'll learn how to do restores from snapshots using either the on tap command line or doing it from client hosts. If the option to make the snapshot directory visible is set on a volume and it is by default, then users can do their own restores from snapshots. But if you don't allow that option, you can still do restores from snapshots, but you as the administrator will have to do it from the ONTAP command line. So the considerations for whether you want to enable that or not. If a user does do a restore from a snapshot, they can actually end up overwriting newer information, which obviously could cause havoc if other people are working on the same shared file. So if you want to make sure that that doesn't happen, then just don't give them the option. But the flip side is that if you don't give them the option, then whenever a user does want a restore, they're going to have to raise a ticket for it. And one of the NetApp administrators is going to have to do it for them. So if you don't allow users to do their own restores, it's going to be more workload for you. If you do allow them to do it, it's going to take away some of your workload, but you might have to fix things if a user makes a mistake. The show snapshot share property should also be set for SIF shares and it is not set by default. So for Unix and Linux clients, you just need to make it visible on the volume and they will be able to see the snapshot directory. For Windows hosts, for them to be able to see the snapshot directory, you have to enable it on the volume and you also have to enable it on the share level as well. It's enabled by default on the volume but it is not enabled by default in the share. So if you have set things up and you go on a Windows host and you cannot see the snapshot directory, first thing to check is that you enabled it on the share. Now, when the snapshot directory is visible, it will show up as a directory inside the volume and to Unix clients, it will show it as a directory named dot snapshot. To Windows clients, it will show up as tilde snapshot. And here is what a tilde looks like. The snapshot directory is a hidden directory, so you need to ensure that you show hidden directories on the client for them to be able to see it. So users can browse to the snapshot directory if you've enabled this. They can view and copy the old version of the file or folder, and they can paste it into the same or a different location in the active file system. So let's say that you have got a file that you've got just one user is working on and they've made some edits, but they're not happy with the edits and they want to roll back to a previous version. They can do that by just restoring an older snapshot directly on top of the current version of the file. So that will overwrite the current version and we'll be back to their old information again. Another scenario could be, and this is maybe if you've got users working on a shared file, that a user, maybe multiple users have been making some changes and say you've got user one and user two and user two has overwritten some changes that user one made and user one wants to get those changes back but they don't want to overwrite the changes that were made by user two. So you want to have the two different versions of the file. Well, in that case, what the user can do is browse to the snapshot directory and then copy the old version to a different location. Now you've got the two different versions and the users can sort it out. They can make the edits, which ends up keeping all of their changes from both users. Windows users can also use the previous versions tool as well as browsing to the folder and dragging and dropping files from there. You'll see how the previous versions tool works and also how all the different restore options work when you see the lab demo later. If snapshot directory access is enabled on the volume, but the show snapshot share property is not set, then Windows users can use the previous versions tool, but they cannot browse to the tilde snapshot directory. So you know how I said in the last slide that for Windows users to be able to do this, you should enable it on the volume and on the share as well. Well, if it's just enabled on the volume, they will be able to use the previous versions tool. But when they try to browse to the snapshot directory, they're not going to see it. So to be able to browse to the directory, you need to enable it on the volume and on the share as well. Restores from a client host use a copy operation. 
So let's have a look and see what the client is actually going to see when they look in the volume and they look at that snapshot directory. So we'll work through an example for that. So here we have got a volume which is called thin vol. So this is being accessed by a Linux user and they're browsing to it and they can see that right now in our example, there's a directory inside the volume which is called directory one. And there's a couple of files in there called file one and file two. Then the administrator takes a manual snapshot for this example. I can see it was a manual snapshot because when that happens, this, the dot snapshot directory will now be visible. Again, this is on a Linux host, so it's showing up as dot snapshot. The name of the snapshot shows up as a subdirectory in the snapshot folder. So here, the administrator has manually created a snapshot called manual one, and that contains a point in time copy of the active file system. So what was in the active file system right now was a directory called directory one and the two files called file one and file two. So after that snapshot has been taken, if a user browses to the volume, this is what they will see if they expand the folders. Directory one here is in the active file system. That's what's being should be actively being worked on by the users. They'll also see the dot snapshot directory there and we'll see a folder for every single snapshot that is taken. And inside each snapshot's directory, we'll see what was in the active file system at the time of the snapshot. Okay, next thing that happens is the user creates a new directory called directory two, and they put a new file in there called file one. If they then expand the snapshot directory, they will see the manual snapshot that was taken by the administrator named manual one, and they'll see what was in the active file system at that time, which was directory one and file one and file two. Directory two is not in any snapshot here because the snapshot was taken before directory two was created. Then the next thing that happens is that now the administrator takes a second manual snapshot named manual two. And if a user browses now to the snapshot directory, they will see the first snapshot, which was named as manual one, and what was in the active file system when that snapshot was taken. So that was directory one and file one and file two. They will also see the new snapshot, a separate directory for that, which is named manual two. And in there, they will see directory one and its files and directory two and its files as well. So you can see from here that whenever the first snapshot is taken, that will create the dot snapshot directory and the first snapshot will be there. After that, any new snapshots that are taken, they will get their own directory underneath the snapshot directory and they will contain whatever was in the active file system at the time of that snapshot. Okay, so we talked about how clients can do restores. We also had a look at how the snapshot directory structure works. Last thing to tell you here is about doing restores from snapshots using the ONTAP command line. So to be able to do this, obviously you need to be an administrator to be able to log on to the command line. And if you do that, you can use snap restore. Snap Restore is a license which allows snapshot restores to be run from the NetApp command line. So this is not a separate piece of software that you have to install. All you have to do is add the license code and now Snap Restore is enabled. So Snap Restore is built into the normal ONTAP command line. You just need to license it. Individual files, folders, or an entire volume can be restored when you use Snap Restore. So if you're restoring from a client, you can restore files or folders, but you can't restore the entire volume. So if you want to do the entire volume, you need to do that from the command line. Restores from Snap Restore revert the active file system by resetting the inode pointers. So this is different than how it works when you're doing a restore from a client. It's quicker than and does not require the additional disk space used by the copy operation when restoring from a client host. So when you do a restore from a client, it uses a copy. When you use Snap Restore at the command line, it resets the inode pointers, and it's much faster doing it from the command line. So because of that, use Snap Restore for restoring large amounts of data. 
because it doesn't take that additional disk space of the copy and it's much faster as well. Some final considerations about snapshot restore operations. When completing a volume restore with snap restore, all snapshots which are newer than the one used for the restore are deleted. So be careful and make sure you're restoring from the correct snapshot. If you're not sure, then start with the newer one and work your way back. Don't go with the older one because as soon as you've done that, you've lost all the newer snapshots. Restoring a file or folder, however, does not delete newer snapshots. This is just when you restore the volume. And also, snapshot restore operations cannot be reversed. So once you've done it, there's no option to roll back there. Now, if you had an, if you had restored a file or a folder and there was a newer snapshot, you could still revert to the newer snapshot. But if there's no newer snapshot and you revert back to a snapshot, then what was in the active file system is gone. You're back to what was in the snapshot now. Hopefully, you've got a backup in that case. If you've no backup and you don't have a newer snapshot, then you've lost whatever had changed since that snapshot that you restored. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also check out my NetApp storage complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.